This video shows the management of biopsies from their arrival at the Laboratory of Anatomical Pathology to the release of the diagnostic report. The samples come to Anatomical Pathology from the Endoscopy Department. The information in the endoscopic referral is checked. Patient details and endoscopic details, number of samples submitted, number of lesions and their location. All the samples should be perfectly identified with a sticker with the patient's details on. If the details on the referral do not match the submitted elements, if there's one extra sample or if one is missing, the patient's name is wrong or the sample does not have a sticker, the samples are not accepted and are returned for correction. It is essential that all the correctly identified samples from the referral are accounted for, for their further study. If there is no discordance, the referral papers are stamped and accepted with their respective samples and are registered with a biopsy number for each patient. This number is on all the recipients. Each colonoscopy report, with its respective recipients of samples, are registered in the Anatomical Pathology Lab. Name, CIC number, number of recipients, etc. They are given a code to guarantee their traceability throughout the whole process. From now on, the process will be controlled by use of a barcode and QR in all referrals, blocks and slides. Corresponding cassettes for each sample to be analysed are printed using the barcode from the referral. This code is very important as it ensures the traceability of each sample throughout the process. The identity of the patient and the information on the endoscopy referral are checked again to see if they match. A macroscopic study is carried out, which includes the number of containers, the number of fragments in each container, and the morphological characteristics of the material, size and shape. A member of the medical staff records all her observations on a cassette. The tissue sample is measured. When it's possible to determine the insertion area of the polyp, this area, resection margin, is painted with Indian ink. If it is not possible to guarantee which the insertion area is, the margin may not be valuable. The ink is set with acetic acid, so it does not come off on the tissue. Each sample is cut for inclusion on the cassettes. Each container is related to the number of cassettes which have been generated and these are deposited in a recipient which is going to process the determination of the samples. This first process requires between 8 to 16 hours depending on the size of the sample. Paraffin is included in each cassette to create a block. Any extra paraffin is eliminated once it has solidified. The blocks of paraffin are cut with a microtome of 3 micro thick to make the necessary slides for microscopic study. The slices are placed in a tray of water to be later placed on each slide. All the slides are labelled with their traceability code, date of the cut, staining and the pathology it has been assigned.
The staining process requires one to two hours depending on the number of slides to be processed. The processor stains the samples with hematoxylin and eosin and the covers are put on automatically. Once the slides have been stained, the traceability of each sample is checked again. The number of containers for each referral and the number of cassettes and slides are verified for inclusion. A member of the medical staff receives the trays with the slides and petitions of the endoscopy in order to carry out the microscopic study. The endoscopic information is essential for a correct histopathological diagnosis. Once observed, the medical staff will do a microscopic description, diagnosis and encoding in SNOMED. This is all recorded on a cassette for later transcription in a report. The details and analysed samples are checked again. The tape with the microscopic description and SNOMED encoding, which corresponds to each patient, is written up in a final report, including all the information of the research. Once the medical personnel has received the final report, they are validated and published in the computer system and are available through the patient's records so that his GP or digestive consultant can access them immediately and from anywhere. The stored containers are kept for one month from the date of diagnosis in case any other study is needed. The slides and the paraffin blocks are kept indefinitely in case a new analysis of the samples are needed in the future. Moreover, special techniques of immunohistochemistry and genetics are carried out for specialised requirements to evaluate hereditary factors and specific treatments in the case of colorectal cancer, actin staining, molecular techniques KERAS, NRAS, etc. Microsatellite instability, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, MLH1, etc. This process requires a minimum time which lengthens if special techniques are asked for. Close collaboration between endoscopy and anatomical pathology. A clear endoscopic report. It is recommendable to send each polyp in a different recipient, referencing the location, type of surgical removal, complete or fragmented, and approximate size. The anatomical pathology should be clear and useful to help the clinics in the prognosis and follow-up of the patients.